Hello and welcome to the playlist on SAP and Power Platform here on the SAP on Azure YouTube channel. As mentioned in a previous video, we have multiple ways to connect to an SAP system. One of them is the SAP ERP connector, which allows you to connect to BAPIs and RFCs in the SAP system. RFCs or remote function calls have been around for many, many years in SAP systems. So that's a technology that is wildly adopted at our joint customers. In order to use this ERP connector, we need to install an on-premises data gateway, which serves two purposes. One is to bridge the firewall protection um, between the SAP system in your intranet and the outside um, internet, basically. Similar like the SAP Cloud Connector, um, it enables a secure connection from the, uh, the, the internet to your SAP system. The other purpose is to translate the Power Platform call from our SAP ERP connector to an RFC or BAP um, using the SAP.NET connector functionality. So as you can imagine, there are a few things that need to be taken care of before we can really get started. So let's take a look. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to connect our SAP system, which is obviously behind the firewall with the Power Platform. So in my case here, I'm in Power Automate, I'm under Data Gateways. And what I want to do now is I want to light up our on-premises data gateway that we'll install in a second here, so I can later use it in um, Power Automate flows. So in order to do that, what I have already done as a preparation is I've deployed in my specific case an SAP NetWeaver um, ABAP 741 um, using the Cloud Appliance Library. And um, on this virtual machine, I now want to um, install the um, on-premises data gateway. So in order to install the on-premises data gateway, we need to make sure that we have the .NET framework installed. Um, you might also need to install the Visual C++ redistributables. And then once you have installed these um, topics, then you can go to the SAP connector from Microsoft. Um, actually, you need an S user. Um, we talked about this in, in one of our previous um, videos. And then um, make sure that you download the SAP connector from Microsoft.NET 3.0. So actually, if you scroll down here, you can see there are multiple versions available. Just take the one here that is compiled with the .NET framework 4.0. And um, as of my recording now here, this is the latest version. Don't take the 3.1, but really stick to the um, .NET connector 3.0, um, in, in, and in my specific case, the um, X64 um, bit. Once that is done, um, we are ready then to download the on-premises data gateway. So uh, always take the latest version, obviously. Um, there are always um, new enhancements, and especially compared to uh, like, like half a year ago, there have been some major improvements um, in the on-premises data gateway that uh, we'll take a closer look at um, later as well, especially when it comes to single sign-on from the Power Platform to your SAP system. So uh, that's a good uh, way to get started. Now, I have already downloaded all these files, so let's um, quickly start with the installation. Um, I have as already installed the .NET component, so the next thing that we need to install is here the SAP.NET connector. Uh, I've already extracted the files. If you um, just run the installer here, um, there's one specific thing that you need to really um, consider, and that is this here, install assembly. GACs, so the um, so the files need to be installed in the global assembly cache. So just make sure that you uh, select this topic here, then click on next, next, and then just wait for the installation to be completed. So that's actually fairly fast. So we can just um, continue with the next one, and that's the um, install of the on-premises data gateway. And similar like the .NET connector, it's really straightforward. It's really just a few clicks that you need to go through. But there's one topic that I also want to highlight. So let me just go through, through the first steps. So when you, when you sign in, um, just enter the credentials of your Power Platform user. And now when you sign in, just provide your credentials. So now when you register the um, new gateway on this computer, there's one specific step. So at first, obviously, I need to provide a name 
on-premise data gateway cal system. I'll provide a recovery key. And now here is a very crucial point. You, you need to make sure that you select the very same region um, as the environment your power platform is in. So in my case, I am in central US, but if that would not be the case, then I, um, I can select here from a bunch of different um, regions that are available. So as I said, I'll just stick to central US, I'll click on done, and now I can actually configure or, and finish the configuration of this on-premises data gateway. Just while this is, is finishing, let me quickly um, switch over here to my environment. Actually, you can already see it's already um, um, available here. But just in case um, you are not sure uh, in uh, in which region your your power platform is um, located, then you can just um, join here or log into the admin of the power platform. And then if you go to environments, you get you can actually see the region in which your um, for, or for which your environment is configured. So in my specific case, I'm in Contoso default. You can see here it's re registered for the United States region, which means if I go back here to Power Automate, if I go to Data Gateways, then you can see here the on-premises Data Gateway Cal system that we just registered.